Welcome back to another episode of Into the Airbnb, where we talk with Airbnb hosts about their short-term rental experience. Our guests for today are Rebecca and Aaron, based in British Columbia, Canada. They manage a multi-dwelling unit remotely in London, Ontario, and today they'll share with us about their journey, experience, and success story with Airbnb and remote hosting since the very beginning. This episode is sponsored by Airbnb, the only one analytics dashboard for short-term rental investors and managers, where you can find precise Airbnb data such as occupancy rate, revenue, average daily rate, and so on. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Can you tell me how did you get started with your first Airbnb listing? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I was, well, it was actually my parents. Um, they uh, they actually made a um, investment into a pre-construction home um, in London, Ontario. Uh, I think it was about like four and a half years ago. Um, four and a half years ago. So they make this investment into a pre-construction. Once the <clears throat> once the unit was built. Um, uh, they were looking for long-term tenants. Uh, and um, my friend of mine who also had a uh, property in London, Ontario, uh, at the time was doing Airbnb. Um, so he showed me his, um, his uh, month-to-month earnings and you know how, much, how, how he operates it and, uh, and all of the details that I needed to know. And he said to give it a shot. And um, I, I convinced my parents to do that. And, um, and uh, we started like that. And then from there, we kind of just uh, uh, built our portfolio from there. I see. And how is the seasonality, for example, in Ontario? So kind of going back to um, our rental that we had four years ago. So that was actually our first rental and we sold, ended up selling that rental. Um, mm-hmm. So during that time, we only had it for, I think, one year. So we yeah. really only got to see all the seasons one time. We found that in Ontario specifically in the summer months, it picked up a lot um, during, I guess, between like June and August. And then I think in the fall, it kind of slowed down a little more. Um, and then after selling that property, we reinvested the money into our, our um, Airbnb house that we have now as a, we opened it in mid January. Yeah. So now we're kind of going through um, our first time into each month and each season. Um, but we're noticing it's, it seems kind of similar to our last listing, which was also hosted in London, Ontario. Um, surprisingly in March, it was actually, I think, uh, less busy than January and February. And now it's picked up a lot from April and I, our big bookings going into June have also increased. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I feel like, <clears throat> uh, the, the type of listings, that I have is kind of like a utili- utilitarian listing. So it's more for like the day-to-day people, people who need to go to work or visiting family close by. Um, it's, not, it's not a vacational property. Um, it's, it's more for your day-to-day use. Um, so but with that being said, the fluctuation between uh, your summer months to your winter months are not, are mm-hmm. not substantial. It's not significant in like ten to like ten thousand dollars or something like that. It's just a few thousand dollar differences. Um, but uh, there is a peak in the summertime, obviously because of the availability of time for people to travel and 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 for people to see other family members. I think it's just more prominent in the summertime, and for that reason, it is a little bit higher in the summer months. But um, uh, uh, yeah, like our 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 business models re- like revolved around you know providing. Um, adequate uh, hospitality for the people that need it on a day-to-day basis and not more so on the um, vacational side of things. So, yeah. I see. And with the first listing you have, how was your first like Airbnb experience? I, I heard that you had like support from a friend who already did Airbnb. Yeah. So, so, <clears throat> mm-hmm. so initially, um, uh, that, that, that I'm very thankful for and I'm grateful for um, uh, because uh, we had we had a lot of the resources. Um, so Rebecca and I, we, we, we weren't left in the dark when we initially started. So we had um, uh, we had a, uh, a cleaner, a professional handyman, 
uh, and 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 just a team of people that that would be able to you know <clears throat> get to get to work and uh, uh, and and really get things done, I, and that really helped us. And so because we had the resources and then we had the guidance, uh, those two things in combination really helped navigate the the uh, the blind area and in going into going into Airbnb initially. And then after a few months, you just kind of get used to it. You you understand the rhythm of things, and uh, it just it just becomes second nature. Um, great. And how did you manage to get your first um, crew for that listing? Reviews. Sorry, the first uh, the crew, oh, okay. the first crew, like the cleaning people, oh. men. Yeah. So, like I said, um, I think I think this is like a valuable advice to other people as well. I think like your cleaners and your like your your handyman, or if you have even a property manager or whatever, I think it should come through referral basis. Like you, sh I think it's very hard. Like I we've tried getting cleaners on our own terms, you know, and building them from scratch, and it's much harder. When it comes to a referral or like, you know, if you if you can get if you if you're fortunate enough to get um, a referral based cleaner or a handyman, uh, you know, you have a proof of concept. You know that they know how to run the how to run the cleaning in accordance to the Airbnb, um, you know, policies and, and and all of these things. And it just makes it so much easier. So, yeah, that was that was very helpful. The, the referral to the to, to our crew was uh, integral, but it was from our, our friend who was already in London, Ontario, um, and he had an established Airbnb already. So, yeah, we were fortunate enough to get a referral. But I think that's a uh, I think that it's extremely important that, you know, you go through a vetting process for for your cleaners and handymen because it makes your job a lot easier as a host. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, where is your current listing located? So it's also in London, Ontario, um, and the location is, uh, it's very central to like shopping malls, uh, grocery stores, restaurants, and I don't know if you're familiar with London, Ontario, but it has a large uh, university and a large college, which it's about a 15 minute drive to both, um, and it's five to 10 minutes off of the highway. So it's pretty central to everything that everyone would, someone would need to um, come into London. So like Arun was saying earlier, a lot of our people who do come to stay in our um, rental, it's usually for business, um, or some of them are, especially in June, they're coming for their, um, their sons or daughters graduation in the universities or the college. Um, it's also right by four large hospitals. So we actually have a lot of doctors and nurses stay in our rental as well. So based on that, am I right to assume that you also do like mid-term and long-term long rentals? So because of the uh, uh, tenancy policies in Ontario, uh, it, becomes, uh, it becomes hazardous to, to keep uh, a guest over 28 days. Um, they're, they're, they, they are like, there's, they are now uh, eligible for like legal, uh, action. If, if, if we were to try to take the evict them out of, uh, over anything over 28 days. So we try to keep our occupancy less than 28 days. We have had one family though, that did stay longer. But yeah. We don't I, do but it. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, we assess the situation. We understand if, you know, if the guests are, um, cooperative and 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 we understand their situation. Yeah, we definitely will accommodate more than twenty eight days. But for the for our general rule of thumb, um, uh, less than twenty eight days. I see. Okay, that's great as well. So, what is your average occupancy rate in that uh, listing? So right now we have about an average occupancy rate, a total occupancy rate, uh, average rate uh, at eighty two percent. However, I think that's a kind of a skewed number. Um, uh, occupancy rate is it's really hard to determine on, on Airbnb when like when you have the three lit like what the way I structured my listing because um uh you know like for example the entire unit uh will have a very low occupancy rate but it, it, it but but the unit that's the two separate units are being utilized that's why the third listing has a very low occupancy rate so uh the average is around 83 percent but um uh, 82 uh, 82 but uh yeah it, it is i think kind of skewed i'm not sure the exact numbers for each listing i see and um is that listing like a duplex or something that's why you list two different part of it yeah yeah so, so it's a linked uh listen go ahead so it's a whole house um mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a three bedroom house upstairs and then in the basement there's two bedrooms so we split it off so 
the stairs going to the basement, there's like a locked door. Um, so it's actually two units. And then we have a third listing, which if someone wants to rent out the whole house, so they would have five bedrooms, they can do that too. I see. And have you had any problem with um, guests combining at the same time in the listing? No, in fact, I think, in fact, I think it actually kind of helps. Um, I think, I think a lot of times uh, guests feel more comfortable when they know that there's someone else in in the property area uh, it just it, you know especially with the basement unit i think it, it gives some comfort knowing that uh, there are other people in the in the unit and i think it's actually really helped us not to have any issues so far with um, complaints from neighbors or any parties being thrown because i think they know that there's either guests upstairs or guests downstairs um, some people think or some people know it's an airbnb other people just assume it's tenants so i think They've been more respectful that right. way, and Absolutely. it's actually helped us in terms of making sure that they're, um, yeah, not throwing like any noise parties. complaints. Nothing like you know, people are much more, um, uh, they're more more compelled to to meet the noise standards of ten thirty p.m. Yeah. You know, and stuff like that, just because they know that there's other people in the house. So yeah, it does make it easier. <clears throat> That's great. I actually didn't expect that because I have I've heard from um, other hosts that if they host two different people in the same listing, they don't mm -hmm. get along or something like that. So uh, I wasn't expecting that. We, we, we ensure that like uh, both our units have separate entrances. Um, the guests, right. very, like they don't have to interact if they don't need to, like they, they, you know, they have their own way of getting inside the house. Um, it's completely separated. Uh, it's, it, it, there's no, very little interaction. Yeah. The only time they're, they, they need to interact is if like, like, they, or they would interact as if they needed to, you know? Yeah. Uh, and so I think um, because of the way we set it up, um, it makes it, it makes it so that it's conflict free. Yeah. And our uh, driveway is really big too. So there's no issues with parking, which is nice. Yeah, I agree. That's nice. What is your pricing strategy for all of your three listings? Um, so right now we're kind of playing around with it since it's our first few months with this current listing. Uh, we manually adjust our prices. Um, I think before we kind of put our prices more on the lower end just to get started and to start we with the bookings. Reviews and ratings initially. <clears throat> so we, 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 uh, we're, we're a huge proponent on ensuring that our, we have a good cost, customer satisfaction. So initially what we did was um, we, gave our, uh, we gave our house for really cheap, like, you know, uh, we were putting money into our into our property for the first few months, uh, just because um, we wanted the review and uh, we wanted to build relationships. Uh, but now we have, you know, returning customers. Uh, we have a good uh, we have a good set amount of reviews on all our listings now, and um, so now we can start to increase our price points. Uh, and it's not drastic increases. I'm talking about like five to ten dollar increases. Um, you know, and uh, our occupancy rate still remains pretty high. So. In fact, it actually hasn't changed since we increased our uh, pricing. And I think going into the summer months too now, I think we're going to have to reevaluate our pricing and continue to increase it because, uh, yeah, I think people are, are willing to pay more than we're um, putting our place up and it's getting booked actually more than we expected it to be. Um, would you say your market is competitive or not? Because um, many hosts have to... Um, based their price on the competition. And yeah, I so absolutely. <clears throat> Our initial price points uh, were in reference to a competitive analysis. Like we did do uh, market research. We understood where to put our price points. Um, we did try to do a low cost leadership strategy in ensuring that, you know, we were, um, we were going to make a mark with our competitors. However, like, I don't think, I think as soon as you establish your, I think as soon as you establish your, um, uh listing i think that like some of those factors kind of get mitigated and um you know yeah and i think i, I think no, we no longer have to be so concerned about our competitors uh, it's more about just focusing on what we need to do now but initially yeah of course our price points were uh based off of our competitors but uh, i think we've kind of uh, evolved from that mm -hmm. i understand and in this past uh time being on Airbnb host, were there any particular big challenges that you went through? Um, I'm sure there are big challenges. I'm trying to think of ones that come up, like up to the top of my head. 
Uh, one of them, I guess, is like, so we live in British Columbia and our place is in Ontario and we have a great team. So without them, we really wouldn't be able to run our Airbnb. Um, there's times though that I wish I could just like pop on over there and help mitigate ish, like little things that come up when guests are there. Like if they have issues, we have a lock um, or a smart lock. So sometimes there's issues with that. Um, so I think just, yeah, not being able to go over there for a quick like 10 minute uh, um. yeah. I think our proximity is a, is, is a huge thing for yeah. sure. It's a huge challenge um, uh, not being close to the locations that you, you, you have Airbnbs in. Um, but uh, um, yeah, but I, I think a lot of the challenges that you face on Airbnb is, is, is it's, a, it's pretty, like once you have a few months in it, I think you kind of figure out ways. A lot of the, a lot of the challenges are, are very similar. Like uh, they have a, a similar pattern and, and, and I think you start to figure out ways to uh, tackle it. I think uh, being an Airbnb host is all about providing solutions. And so I think that that's what you learn and, and you learn that very quick. And um, how do you find the fact that you're doing remote hosting like particularly challenging, especially in your area? Um, I think it's actually been easier than we thought it would. Like, I mean, for, like, what is it to get work. recognition or? Or so you were saying about like remote, remotely hosting our Airbnb? Yes, that's right. Yeah. So I think, um, yeah, even though there are challenges and there's times that I wish you were closer, I think it, I'm surprised how well it, it has been being remote. <clears throat> considering, like, considering how far we are, like, even if we were closer, like given the, given the opportunity, um, if we lived like even five minutes away from that house, I don't see myself having to go um, often, much, yeah. you know, I, I don't think it would maybe be once or twice a month. Uh, it is self-sustainable. It is self-sufficient. And um, I, I it really requires no um, involvement, like yeah. physically. Uh, there are times, of course, where, yeah, of course, like, you know, there's a problem. Uh, for example, what, we had a plumbing issue last month um, and we had to send a plumber uh, but it, it, you know, there was a, the, it leaked and, and the, the, there was a hole in the, in the, in the basement ceiling. And so for that, I really wanted to just fly over there and, and look at the hole myself and see, you know, what we have to do and stuff. But, um, it, you know, that was a challenge that we had to mitigate over, over a long distance. However, uh, it was, it, it is, it's, it's easily doable and it's easily possible. Uh, yeah. And uh, it's just figuring out ways to do that. Is there any particular uh, technology or like apps yeah, like investing used to make okay. this easier? Yeah, so investing into smart locks is probably like uh, like a huge benefit of mine because uh, uh, we have like set codes for our cleaners, set codes codes for our uh, handyman. Uh, we can we we can create timed codes for our guests uh, specifically for when they check in and check out. It just makes it easier for accessibility. Um, that's a huge technology um, advancement, and 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 just like other than that, really, uh, I don't. There's not much else technology that we use to 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 better to better make our efficiency. But that's definitely helped us a lot. I, If we did have cameras, however, that would that would be helpful. But um, currently, we don't. I think kind of going back to the smart locks too is in our last Airbnb, we didn't have that, and I think that was actually a big hindrance to our property we were having issues with people not returning the key or not um yeah like taking advantage of the, key, the time that they had in the place so now with the time mm -hmm. lock locks if they leave after the checkout time they can't go back in um and if let's say they did forget something we can give them a one-time uh lock uh passcode that they can just go on once grab their stuff and get out so i think with the smart locks it's made a big difference and we can actually see Um, like if someone is using it and going into the house. Exactly. Um, so I think it, it also adds a layer of security to our unit. But like Arun was saying, other than that, we don't really have any other technology. That streamlines our efficiency. Yeah. We don't have any technologies to do that. Um, but uh, I think in the future, as we get more and more listings, we might, uh, we, we might have to um, do that. Yeah, I was just asking because I've heard from other remote hosts that I've interview, interviewed before that they also use, for example, dynamic pricing solutions or some kind of apps to communicate with the cleaning crew, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just we just, we have a small group of cleaners. So we just have uh, 
two main cleaners and then one we use when the other two aren't available. So we just uh, text them or, or they call us if they need. I see, that's great. And lastly, any tips that you'd like to share for other Airbnb hosts? Um, I think kind of, we've touched on some of these, but kind of just to summarize, like I think the biggest thing for us is making sure you have a good and reliable team and people that you can uh, trust, especially if you're not gonna be within the same city or close by your Airbnb. Um, so particularly our one cleaner, she's kind of like our assistant too. She will drop in if she if something needs to be done. Let's say a guest is um, telling us that something's wrong with our place. Like she'll go over and either drop something off or help solve the issue. Um, and also she'll like go to the store if we need like more sheets or, or more towels and last minute things. Um, so I think that's been a huge thing for us, especially since we're not in, in the town. Um, the second thing is just making sure you have really good communication and with your guests if there is an issue and like it's inevitable that there are going to be issues and problems are going to come up but just making sure you are transparent with your guests we've had issues with plumbing and um like our thermostat not working and things like that but i think we were able to continue to host them and get a good review out of it even if they had issues come up because we were really good at communicating with them mm -hmm. that's great so that'd be it for today thank you for your time thank you for your tips as well thank you Thanks for listening to Into the Airbnb. We are looking for hosts and other people in the short-term rental industry to interview. If you have what we need and would like to share your experience in this podcast, please send us an email. All the info is at the end of the description.